seem to know her pretty well. It's a long story. Who's she working for? I thought you said she worked for Markinson. I'm not sure anymore. He has finally broken. Grigory was being held at point 36. <sighs> point 36. What is point 36? Point 36 is a women's gulag in Siberia. It's located in the city of Kazakh, Russian for white tomb. You mean Algier prison? What? Built during the Stalinist purges to house the wives and mothers of political dissidents. It was shut down by Khrushchev in 54. Supposedly, but it wasn't. You both seem to know a lot about it. I read a lot, especially about repressed women. Thousands of women died there. No idea where their children or husbands were. If the prison didn't kill them, the cold and heartbreak did. I haven't read about it. I've been there. I was held there eight years ago after being captured in Afghanistan. My first assignment for the PRC, before the agency recruited me. A woman's gulag that doesn't exist. A perfect place to make political prisoners disappear. It would appear that Glasnost has its limits. There is more. Grigoryev has been investigating an international arms consortium. The same group that controls your agency. It wants ours as well. Grigoryev played along when they were content to sell arms to the Sandinistas and Contras and were fueling the war between Iranians and Iraqis. The SVR didn't care. Let the West destroy itself. Exactly so. But the siphon filter virus changed everything. Grigoryev discovered that Xi Hao was going to purchase the virus. The leader of the Heilongjiang, the province that's trying to break away from the PRC. It is not broken away yet. This province has been contested by our two countries for over 400 years. If Xi Hao is successful, the PRC will go to war. And Russia will be drawn in as well. Xi Hao will see to that. The only person who can stop the arms transfer now is Gregorov. That's why he was at the Farcom warehouses at the same time we were. He was looking for the same data disks. Where he also thought he'd gotten all the data. For security reasons, Grigoryev kept all of his files hidden. The imposter was unsuccessful in his attempt to locate them, and we knew nothing of it. We have to break him out. You do not have much time. They have already ordered his execution. Grigoryev will die in the electric chair tomorrow night at midnight. I'll go in. No, you're not strong enough to. I have to do this, Gabe. It's Please? my life at stake if we don't get the other half of the Farcom data. And it's my people who will die if Shi Hao gets phase two of the siphon filter virus. Besides, I'm the only one who knows the layout of the prison. Okay, he's yours. I hope you know what you're doing. I'm in. Won't be long now. We're at the rendezvous point. It's all clear here. I'm making my way to the lower power room now. When I get there, I'll shut it down. I do like how much talking they do when they're supposed to be sneaking and hiding. <laughs> anyway, more plot has been revealed and things are hotting up. So, welcome back to more Siphon Filter 2, everybody. We are playing as Leon. And we have snuck into the uh, women's prison that shouldn't exist, apparently. So, it's been revealed that the man you thought was Gregorov was actually a, an imposter who was trying to find uh, Fagan's missing data files. The real Gregorov is being held in a secret at Algier, a secluded gulag in Siberia used for housing political prisoners, mostly women. Only Gregorov knows the location of the final data disks. Gregorov has been scheduled for execution tonight in one hour. You will break into the prison, shut down the power before the execution, and escape with Gregorov in tow. Note, most of the inmates at Algeria are political prisoners. Help them if you can, but remain focused on the mission. Yeah, this is a pretty nasty place where the Ruskies have been sending people to disappear. And also... <laughs> also, these guards are pieces of shit. Literally. So, let's uh, help as many people as we can. However, there's not obviously too much that we could do. But, you know, we're not going to pass up the opportunity to do a good deed. Now, although our friend Gregorov is going to be executed in an hour, 
we have so much freaking time it's kind of redundant having that time limit there is completely and utterly redundant but that's okay that just means that although we have a clock ticking down there really isn't any uh time pressure at all Pavel's having a nap, love. Just like you. Stay here. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> now, sometimes you can walk up to these prisoners and um, Leon and give them a little bit of dialogue. And other times it just doesn't trigger. I don't know whether that's an emulation thing or what. Now, we have got some weapons. We've got some guns and things, but we can't use them. We do have one gun that we can use. It is a uh, crossbow that we had in the last episode. However... If we don't use the crossbow, apparently you unlock something. Uh, you unlock some stuff for multiplayer. I didn't realize this until I just, you know, didn't use it <laughs> because you don't need it. Um, you don't need it at all. Yeah, as you can see, this place is pretty freaking horrendous. But that's okay. We're not going to worry too much about it because we know our way around here because we've been here before. Okay, that's a rather nasty build up of guards there. And these guards are not exactly happy in their work. I do like it when you're far away from guards um, and the level of detail changes. <laughs> they get like really, really square heads. They kind of remind me of uh, uh, Triton. Oh, was he? Triton? I'm trying to think of his name now. The android from Red Dwarf. Crichton. There we go. Got there in the end. It's like, how can I not remember the characters from Red Dwarf? Well, blame it on the ram, I suppose. Anyway, we're going to Metal Gear our way under these stupid guards who really uh, are completely and utterly inadequate. But that's a good thing for us. We can hear the wails and upset and tears of that woman, which is kind of sad. Come back here, you devil! I'm going to kill you! Now, if we leave this guy, he gets quite excited about the whole thing. But not on our watch. Now, as much as I would love to execute these guards, well, we're not allowed. Yeah. See, we should. Yeah, see, sometimes she says something to that guard and sometimes she doesn't. I don't know why. Um, it's kind of odd, but whatever. It's not super important. It's only some bullshit like, stay safe. We'll be back for you or something. Yeah, this place doesn't look like a fun environment to work in, to be honest. Not gonna lie. Anyway, let's make use of this elevator to go downstairs. Sneak, sneak, sneak. And we're gonna wanna sneak off. And as soon as we hear that elevator start going back up, we wanna drop back under. Because. We've got some very uh, nosy guards that are about to slip in. Ah, perfect opportunity to consume some rum and nicotine. Говорит Валерий, у меня все спокойно. Yes, everything is very quiet, isn't it, my friend? Let's keep sneaking. All right. You're not doing bad here, Leon. Considering how sick she is. Oop, almost rolled into him. <laughs> that would have been awkward. Put down the rum, you jackass. No, my rum. Oop. Gabe, this used to be the laundry. Now it's a security checkpoint with cameras and regular patrols. <laughs> how many guards at the checkpoint? I can't see, but it sounds like there's just one. In that case, the cameras are probably on some kind of rotation. It's just a matter of time. Something I don't have a lot of. Right. Right. Camera turns off and then make your move before it comes back on. Got it. 
Okay, now luckily, this is the world's easiest camera to dupe because it start when you get retake control of the scene, that camera is off and it does actually stay off for a reasonable amount of time. It could be ten seconds or something, way more time than you'll ever actually need. But that's okay. Six packs of smokes, huh? That does seem to be quite a few. All right, let's go deal with Katia. Katia. There we go. I like that name, Katia. I like that. Taking Gregor off to the execution chamber now. You don't have much time. Move now. Yeah, he's not supposed to be being executed for like an hour. So I guess they've um, sped up his execution, which is rather unfortunate. Hey, Katya. Hey, Katya. Not sure why that guy's come running for Katia, but that's none of our business. We're just going to sit here. Drink some rum whilst we wait for this jackass for his head to load back in. There we go. Now notice uh, the countdown has changed from like 50 odd minutes to an to like it's like a minute. I think you get like one and a half minutes to do all of this, which you know sounds kind of crazy, but in all fairness, you have a huge amount of time. Although this guy looks like he's going to be burning as much of our time as he possibly can. What a dick. He goes from the Crichton head to the normal head. <laughs> I do like that. We literally just have to get to the uh, that doorway there and a little bit further. So we're good. We're golden. Right, one up the bum. No harm done. And then full speed ahead. Got it. And got it. Yep, because we didn't use the uh, crossbow. I don't see the point of the crossbow, to be honest. I can't even see it making anything easier. And now the women are unleashed. So those guards are probably going to have a bad time. Anyway, that's going to have to wait for the next video. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And as always, till next time.